Hello Year 10, this is lesson 3 of week 2 on rivers. Um, so this is Wednesday the 11th of November's lesson. Uh, today we're going to be recapping river long and cross profiles. We're going to be looking at something called the Bradshaw model which explains how a river's characteristics change as you go downstream. And then finally we're going to introduce river processes of erosion, transportation and deposition. If you could have a look at this exam question here, I'm going to go through the answers in a moment as I would do if you were in class today. Um, please do actually attempt this before we go through the answers because it will give you um, much more information about where your level of knowledge is at. So press pause and have a go now. Okay, so let's have a look at the answers then. So question one asks you to describe the shape of the river's long profile. It was from this figure in figure 14. You got a mark for statements which show understanding of the gradient of the river. So for example, if you said it was a concave shape, um, or if you said it was steep in the upper course, that was a mark. If you said um, it had a gentle slope in the lower course, that was a mark. Um, there was no credit if you said anything about the cross profile or anything about steep banks at the beginning or being a flatter in the lower course because they're, of course, to do with the cross section. So the long profile, you should have been saying either it was a concave shape for one mark, it was a steeper in the upper, in the upper course, and a gentle slope in the lower course. They were three of the things you could have said for one mark. You don't have to say one thing. Next question. Suggest one reason why the cross profile of a river changes between A and B. So answers must suggest one reason for the decrease in slope angle of the valley slides. You can see here we've got very steep slope angle of the valley sides and here uh, not so steep. Um, and it needs to be based on an interpretation of the information provided. So here's some examples. The valley sides become less steep because of the effects of mass wasting and weathering. Near the source of the river... Oh, sorry, near the source, the river cuts downwards, but further downstream, it's eroding laterally. And there was no credit for description of the changes in the valley between A and B. So notice how it's not described the changes, it suggests one reason, it's explained. I must admit, when I read that, I was, I, I was reading um, describe. It's been a long day of uh, planning lessons and recording lessons. But actually, if you read that question properly, it's asking you why. So why has it changed? And so... Um, you could have said to do with mass wasting and weathering. I probably wouldn't have, have gone for that one. What I would have said basically is that in the upper course, so this is what this one is getting at here, in the upper source, it's vertical erosion that dominates. In the lower course, it's lateral erosion that dominates. That's all you had to say. So vertical erosion dominating in the upper course, lateral erosion dominating in the lower course. You don't have to say both. You don't have to say one of those statements to get the mark. Next one. And this is similar to a question you did on your coast assessment when we looked at the size of the, the average size of sediment at point A on a spit and point B on a spit, which was for, for, further down, um, which um, some of you struggle with. So I thought I'd put this question in, but in, in the context of a river. So it said, one, state one reason why the size of sediment carried by river decreases downstream. So again, one mark. Um, and you just had to show the general idea of attrition. For example, particles in the river may collide with each other, um, gradually um, becoming smaller in size. Um, there's no credit for answers that do not explain the mechanism, e.g. rocks break up. Um, so all he had to say was one reason why the sediment of the river, why the sediment carried by the river decreases downstream. As the rocks are carried by the river, the process of attrition um, makes the rocks break up into smaller pieces or the, the process of attrition wears rocks down, they become smaller and rounder. Anything that's suggesting, because they've been in the river for a longer period of time, attrition has happened and attrition causes them to obviously break up into smaller pieces or to, to, smooth, to, to smooth each other up into smaller pieces, I suppose. Okay, that's just a slide I use for helping print out. So, um... In class, I would be asking the students to discuss what this model shows and I'd like you to um, press pause and have a little think about what you think this model is showing. Press pause. Okay, so hopefully you've had a look at that and tried to decide what's going on. This is called the Bradshaw model. And what it's showing is it's showing upstream and downstream. So if you like, this is the source and this over this side is the mouth of the river. 
And what it's showing is it's a model to show how certain characteristics of the river change as you go downstream. So the discharge of a river increases as you go downstream. See, it's that um, sign getting bigger. Um, the channel width, the width of the channel gets bigger as you go downstream. It gets wider. We know that happens. The depth of the river gets bigger as you go downstream. The average velocity, the average speed of the river gets bigger as you go downstream. The load quantities, the amount of sediment the river is carrying gets bigger as you go downstream. So there's more, more material as you go downstream. And then you notice the diagram kind of flips a bit. And what this is showing is that some things reduce as you go downstream. Oops, I beg your pardon. So load particle size, the size of the sediment that the river is carrying gets smaller. So you generally find bigger rocks up in, higher in the river and smaller rocks and sediment being carried further down the river. The channel bed roughness gets um, decreases as you go downstream. So a much rougher channel bed causing much more of a turbulent flow in the upper, in the upper course and a much smoother channel bed in the um, lower course and then the slope angle the gradient gets smaller or reduces as you go downstream and we know that from the long profile so it's just a, a, a model to kind of show what happens to some of these river characteristics as we go downstream now we know that as we go downstream um, that the, the, the average velocity increases we know that the, uh, the, the, the river gets wider so this is just a model that was put in place to kind of prove that and a, a, a common um, a common uh, GCC investigation or A-level investigation you might do in field work is to prove or disprove the Bradshaw model. So you would go along to a river and you would actually try and measure it a couple of places in the upper course, a couple of places in the middle course, a couple of places in the lower course or as many as you want to try and see whether you could see the discharge of the river increasing. You could see the um, velocity of the river um, increasing. I should mention rib, 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 uh, sorry. I should mention river discharge, and what it actually means. River discharge um, technically is the amount of water passing a certain point in a given length of time in a second. So it was almost as it's amount of water flowing in the river basically. But the technical term is the amount of water flowing past a given point um, in a given amount of time, usually a second. This rather complicated slide. Um, is one that I was just going to go through with the students to make sure they've really and you've really understood um, about the long profile changes in the river, about the cross profile changes in the river downstream, and about some of the characteristics and processes and how they differ in the upper course to the middle course to the lower course. This model that Bradshaw has drawn um, basically just summarizes what we've been doing the last couple of lessons. Now, on the next slide, you'll see a worksheet which just asks you to put into kind of your own language, language that's much easier for you to understand um, what these changes are along along the river. Um, so I'll just show you that slide quickly. So I've just asked you to comment on what how the river valley changes in the upper, middle and lower course. I've asked you to comment on how the river channel varies in the upper, middle and lower course. And then, oh, sorry. And then how the river characteristics change in the upper, middle and lower course. So if you want to complete this sheet um, whilst using this slide to help you. OK, so the river valley is these three top diagrams. Um, the river um, channel obviously is referring to, to the river itself and not the river valley. The river valley is, it valley is the land that it flows in. And the river kind of characteristics are these um, text boxes here. If you have a go at that. Um, Press pause and either if you can print the sheet off or just write it on a piece of paper and complete that table now. Fabulous. So next thing we're going to look at, and we'll rush through this quite quickly because guess what? It's the same as we did for coast. Rivers, just like waves and coast and, and, and the sea rather, rivers do three jobs. They erode stuff, so they break things up. They carry that material and then they drop that material somewhere else. And so you already know what, what erosion means, what transportation, what deposition means. Uh, but they've got those definitions there for you. And do feel free to pause and to write them down or read them if you need to. There are four ways in which a river erodes. Um, hydraulic action. Now, you've heard of that before. Abrasion. You've heard of that before. 
Attrition, you've heard of that before, and solution slash corrosion, you've heard of that before because it's exactly the same as in the coasts. Um, so this is like a, 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 a diagram and you could write if you wanted five different stages in there. Actually, if you go onto Google Classroom, there's a Word document which I've posted with this, which is a more basic um, worksheet just to kind of remind you of the key words. So I will um, just have a quick look, I think, if I can see that Word document here amongst my uh, documents open. Yes. So it's this document here. So as I'm perhaps explaining through, you can work through this Word document. It wants you to put a diagram in. Um, next to the four definitions I've got there um, and the same for um, transportation, the four definitions and then there's some extension work on there. So that's the sheet you should be completing. You may be able to complete it without listening to me droning on um, but if not you can carry on watching as I go through the PowerPoint. So hydraulic action if you remember in the river banks and beds there are going to be cracks and within those cracks there's going to be water and there's going to be air and um, so there's air in those cracks the river's flowing by so it starts as a crack there's um air in those cracks water gets forced into those cracks there's not enough room for the air and the water so it causes it to explode in inverted commas to break away and so you can see there starts as a crack air and water get in that crack and then that crack gets wider Okay, so that's hydraulic action. Force of the water. Force of the water is a key term to use. It's the force of the water forcing its way into those cracks where the air is trapped. I'm going to move on. I think my computer might be uh, giving up on life. Um, I'll just pause this whilst I try and fix my computer. Okay, I fixed my computer. I'm back. So the next process of erosion is attrition. Um, so attrition is where rocks being carried in the river, so they're already carried in the river, will bang into each other because um, the river obviously is turbulent. And so they bang into each other, they become smaller, they become smoother, they become rounder. So you will notice, just like in the sea, um, rocks deposited by the river in the upper course are likely to be bigger and more angular. And rocks deposited by the river in the lower course are likely to be smaller and smoother and round us. It's the process of, of attrition, the rocks banging into each other. Remember the analogy I gave is if you put two rocks into the washing machine at home, um, this is what would happen to them. Although your washing machine would also break, of course. Um, oh, oh, I'm just going to put text in there. Abrasion. Abrasion, if you remember, is the sandpaper effect. And it's exactly the same, but rocks being carried by the river um, will rub against the river bank and the river bed. And as they rub against them, they'll scrape them away. So just like if you're um, using sandpaper at home on the wall, you're scraping away the paint. The rocks scrape away, and it's this process of rubbing against the uh, river bank and the river bed that causes it to break away. The river bank is this side bit of the river here. Whoop. And the river bed is obviously the bottom of the river. Final process of erosion is solution. Sometimes this is called corrosion. So corrosion or solution, it's the same thing. And just as in um, coasts, it will be where um, slightly acidic water in the river will react with certain minerals in certain rocks and it will cause them to dissolve. Um, a great one is limestone, calcium carbonate um, can be dissolved by river water. I'm sure these little statements will uh, talk about that. Next one, transportation. So the river's got all this material which has been eroded. How does it carry it? Well, the same way that the sea carries material. Um, it carries large rocks or larger rocks by a process of traction. So that's where larger material is rolled along the riverbed. So a process of traction. The next size material, kind of pebble and um, size material and probably... Um, particles of sand they're moved by a process called saltation and they literally it was almost like leapfrogging they will bounce along the river bed so as the river moves along these are light enough to be carried by the river and then drop down and carried by the river and then drop down and so they almost jump along the river bed and it's called saltation and i always think it's jumping um because the word saltation sounds like it's jumping saltation Final one is carried in suspension. So this is your particles of sand, silt and clay, which are lighter to be carried within the water. Um, the fourth act of transportation is obviously being carried in solution. It's carried as part of the dissolved load. So at the end of this lesson, we've covered um, river processes. Do complete the Word document that goes with this. And we've looked at the Bradshaw model and recapped the long profile and cross profile. Um, if you are at home self-isolating, hopefully you're feeling better soon or able to return soon.